Hi, I'm Mark Morissette. Today we're going to talk about RF fidelity. And I guess the first question is, why do I care about RF fidelity? Well, you know, in LTE and pretty much all broadband communication systems these days, our object is to move data from one point to another point. So the, the whole idea is to get that data received uh, as accurately and as quickly as possible. So if you're uh, having issues like um, you're doing a throughput test and your frame rate is much lower than what you expect, or you have uh, excessive bit errors, or if you're doing a phone quality check and you have, uh, you're dropping calls, or, or you have jittery video, the first thing you're probably going to look at is, you know, do I have a good clean signal that's clean enough to support that link? And that's why RF fidelity is important. So a bit about uh, one of the most uh, often used uh, RF fidelity metrics these days uh, is called error vector magnitude. And error vector magnitude uh, describes a ratio. It's a ratio of, if you were to visualize the, the error as a power, uh, it's the ratio of the, uh, the power of the error to the power of the signal that you're trying to, to the ideal signal that you're trying to receive. And uh, why that's important is um, all of your data is encoded uh, onto RF carriers as unique amplitude uh, and, and phase combinations. I have an example on the board here where this is a constellation of, of, of 16 quam, where all of the digital data is mapped into 16 unique amplitude and phase combinations. That's what these little red symbols are here. And if we receive the signal perfectly, we would land exactly on one of those red dots, and the error, the power of the error would be zero, and, and the link would always work perfectly. But what would happen if, for example, if I received the signal and it was over here? You know, well, you know, maybe maybe I'll still decide that you know uh, that that I should be uh, at this constellation point. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a measurement of the power of this error vector versus the power of the ideal error vector. And as long as that ratio is small enough. We're not going to make any errors, and the link will, will, operate, uh, will operate as expected. The problems become when um, the error vector gets big enough where we actually swing over, and, and if we're over here, we would decide that we're perhaps at its neighbor constellation point. And as a result, uh, the data that we decode is wrong. And as a result, perhaps we would a retransmission, and in that case, uh, our throughput would go down. So EVM is a very important measurement. What, why it's so convenient is it directly gives you a metric that measures the quality of how accurately you're decoding. It incorporates many types of uh, RF distortion. It incorporates uh, carrier-to-noise ratio, that is, um, the ratio of the uh, desired signal to the overall noise floor uh, at the receiver. It incorporates uh, other RF distortions, such as uh, amplitude distortion. For example, if you're starting to uh, go into compression, or if you have uh, problems with timing and or uh, uh, frequency, uh, which is wandering. You know, all of these uh, RF anomalies uh, would, would affect uh, where you believe the received signal is and how close it is to the actual unique amplitude and phase mapping uh, that the data was encoded with uh, on the transmitter side. So that's why EVM is so convenient and so, uh, so important. It sort of incorporates in one single measurement what used to be a multitude of RF measurements. And it directly uh, gives you a, a measure of quality that you can directly link back, higher level link quality, and packet error rate.
and frail. 